Hey, so I've been getting a lot of questions lately uh, about what I do, my gun training, my armoring, all that good stuff. I've worked on a lot of Westerns, and specifically Westerns, I, uh, it's very important, uh, the gun work that goes into that, the training, sometimes called cowboy camp when the actors and actresses learn to ride and handle the guns. The guns in a Western, since Westerns rely heavily on the big shootout and just about every character has a gun on their hip, is a, is a huge part of how their character looks, uh, what kind of uh, tone they're giving just by their appearance, um, their attitude towards the gun, how they wear it, where they wear it, what kind of uh, leather holster and cartridge belt they might be wearing. Is it embellished? What color is it? Is it old? Is it new? And is it under a jacket? Is it outside of the coat? Or um, There's just so much that goes into it. And then how you hold the gun, how you shoot the gun, how you're casual with the gun, when it's cocked, when it's not, when you present it. There's so many little elements and levels that go into the gunmanship that display a lot of emotion or at least put an exclamation mark or another level of emotion on top of the dialogue. So as important as acting is in a Western, the gun acting, I guess you could say that, uh, is just as important and requires a lot of effort by the actors and actresses. And I've been very blessed to work with a lot of great people and teach them some very cool stuff. So I'm going to start sharing a bit of those stories and how that works on the film industry, uh, in the film industry, in the movie sets and things like that. It's important stuff that really helps the story and sell the movie but it is, is one of the most overlooked behind the scenes, uh, one of the most overlooked behind the scenes interests. I'm still waiting for Netflix to call me and want to do a little behind the scenes thing, but uh, I'm going to just throw it out there myself uh, because you guys definitely seem very interested and I've been getting all those questions. So we're going to throw that out to you in multiple videos over time. Bear with me. I'm very busy right now on a show. So as I see time and can, uh, do little bits I will uh, make them up edit them and throw them out on YouTube so definitely subscribe thank you so much Joey Dillon here Hollywood gunslinger gun trainer armorer I'm about to drop all sorts of cool videos on my YouTube channel here discussing gun spinning quick draw tricks of the movie industry, talking about training on The Harder They Fall, uh, Buster Scruggs, uh, and so many more awesome things that I've been so blessed to work on. Sometimes I get the opportunity to add some creative input to the shows that I work on, whether it's the right dialogue for what we're discussing or the right calibers or how to talk about the guns in a way that makes sense for the period. Um, and sometimes it's just to solve small dilemmas on getting what the actor wants across to the audience in a way that makes sense as a character that they're supposed to you know know everything there is about guns and things so uh having a gun background um, i can sometimes plug in well if you do it this way that might make sense so the cherokee bill bullet in the harder they fall um so uh rj who who plays uh beckworth amazing talent he could soak up the gun spinning almost as fast as i could give it to him um we'll talk about some of those tricks and things that uh, we were able to to come up with for the show but during the rehearsal, before Beckworth uh, has an untimely end, spoiler, uh, with Lakeith, um, who played uh, Cherokee, Bill, uh, they were going through a rehearsal about how they might set up the scene later that week. And RJ uh, had a cold weapon. Cold weapon, ladies and gentlemen, cold weapon. How do we know that? There is nothing in the chambers. And yes, there is such thing as a cold weapon. Some people say, never a cold weapon. Uh, there is in the movie industry. And we're gonna talk about that too coming up. So stay tuned for that. So empty gun, 1873 model Colt, single action army. So during the rehearsal, uh, James, the director and writer was all up in the face of RJ trying to get some cool ideas for shots. And RJ wanting just as actors do, some business with the gun. And so just for some business, he brings the gun up like this and he starts playing with it, which the director's digging because it's all this cool mechanical stuff. I mean, these are a work of art, okay? There's a few things in life that have come together mechanically to just be art and uh, this gun is one of those. And we're gonna talk about all sorts of stuff like that in future videos. So RJ's sitting here and he decides to start, I don't know, unloading the bullets out of his gun one at a time, like so, while he's looking towards Cherokee Bill. And 
the directors eaten it up. Thought it was really cool. Bullets are falling, so you get that brass coming out. And then the director walked away, got what he liked out of it. They were thinking about, okay, that, that, that would be cool for the coming, the scene coming up. So I walked up to RJ and I said, so what, what are you getting across there? Because you're finally facing off with Cherokee Bill, your nemesis, who you've been waiting the whole movie to see who's faster. And yet you're unloading your gun just before the duel. So what are you doing? And he said, well, I just, you know, I wanted some business to do with the gun. Makes sense. Because uh, it's just cool mechanically to make these guns function and stuff, work it. But he's unloading the gun. So his idea was, what I'm trying to say is, I don't need all six bullets in this gun to kill you. I just need that one bullet to take you out. And I said, well, that's cool. The audience might not really understand that the way you're doing it. But let me think for a minute. And I thought, oh, a bullet with your name on it. Cherokee Bill. So I said, what if, what if in your belt loop, you had a bullet tucked in the front of your holster near the buckle, and then you got to pull it out and engraved on the side because you've been waiting your whole career of a gunslinger to meet Cherokee. You've got Cherokee's name there because you knew someday you'd meet him. RJ loved the idea. He went, ran it up the uh, flagpole to the brass and uh, James, the director, totally dug it as well. Uh, so I talked to the prop master and he thought it was a neat idea. And I said, I would love to try to come up with some uh, choices. And so uh, JP Jones, the prop master, let me take out my Dremel that I had as part of my kit on set. And I made three different choices with Cherokee written on the side of the bullet. One that said Bill on the lead. Pretty sure I was wearing a mask when I was engraving the lead. That's a good thing. Uh, anyway, so Cherokee, Bill, offered up the options. They came up with the one that you see on camera. We get that really cool scene of him pushing the bullet into the gun. And uh, that's how the Cherokee Bill bullet came to light in the movie. So many more little things I can talk about, and I will on upcoming videos. If you like that and you want to see more about old guns, old weaponry, all the movies I've worked with, movie guns, historical guns, random old cool stuff that I'm going to be talking about showing off. I'm also into old cars, old motorcycles, and things like that that I come across and create and make, run, and things like that. So you should subscribe to this channel, uh, and I'm going to put out all sorts of cool stuff that uh, you'll be watching.